Hello and welcome to the final 10 here on Back of the Net. My name's Sam Davis. My name's Tom Jordan. How are you feeling, mate? Sick. Uh, yeah, sick of nerves, mate. Um, I think a lot of Bournemouth fans will be in the same boat. Bit of a cup final feel, isn't it? You know, winner takes all, as Abba lovely, <laughs> really nicely put. And yeah, I think it's, oh, mate, it's just everything comes down to this game and it's disappointing because we probably felt like we could, we could do this earlier. But listen, it's still in our own hands. Um, we're at home. So, big game, but it's all on one game, mate. Massive. It's all on one game. So, why is it called the final 10? Well, we started this series on international break when Cherries had 10 games to go. And at that point in time, Forest were eighth in the table. Bournemouth was sitting pretty on 69 points. We'd scored 12 more goals than them, and we had 11 more points. But now, the points difference is three. And what's worse is that Forest have a superior goal difference. So whilst whilst it's horrible for us, mate, it does just underline, though, why the Championship is such a popular league. It's so exciting, isn't it? It's, yeah. just, it's just not nice to be in the situation. No, exactly. And um, it seems like it happens every season, doesn't it? Whether that be at the top or the bottom, it's always exciting. There's always a team that seemed to come from nowhere, which has obviously been Forest, so to speak. Relegation zone when the manager went in, done a remarkable job. It will be... Um, It'd be really interesting because I think if he were to drop in the playoffs and not go up, mm. then the narrative would be different that he's failed in the playoffs again. But he's done a remarkable job. There's no doubt about that. And Forrest are going to be a, yeah, going to be a bit of a test, mate. I mean, I didn't re I knew obviously we were 11 points clear of them in the before the final 10. The fact we had 12 more goals and now we're below them on goal difference. Mm. Well, not below them, but you know what I mean. Less goal difference is is unbelievable. And although that's disappointing for us, it just shows what a great job they've done, mate. And as you say. Championship, always exciting, everyone's always looking at it and I think, unfortunately for us, I think the neutral probably wants Forrest to, to get the job done but um, hopefully we'll um, be the party poopers in that sense. Absolutely, so there are 180 minutes of league football to go, that's what we're hoping anyway and like Tom said, it's a linchpin match. Will Forrest's impeccable form continue or will the AFC Bournemouth players stand up and be counted? So, obviously, our focus is going to be on the Forest game. But before we begin, just want to say our sincere condolences to the family and friends of Robin Folds, who passed away in the last few days. Robin was a huge Cherries fan watching Home and Away, more recently due to ill health, just at home. He was an absolute gentleman, and I'd always see him with his sons, Matt and David, and the gang, gracing the North Stand, getting behind the lads. I used to play football with Matt for Ferndown Locomotive and um, John Sharkey, former press officer at the club, also played as well. And I remember one Sunday, he managed to commandeer the Cherry Bear outfit <laughs> from, from the uh, stock room or utility room at AFC Bournemouth and um, whacked a Loco shirt on. And um, yeah, he was, he was running up and down the line being our cheer, <laughs> cheerleader at Sunday football. Absolute top man, always brought out the jelly babies at half time as well. Enthusiastic about life and always the heart and soul of the party. What a top, top man and an absolute gentleman. A huge loss and rest in peace. So let's talk football. Here's what's coming up on the show. Seven years ago, there were scenes at the Valley and we talked to Tom to relive those days. We'll also be talking about that Blackburn win, the reaction after that game, what a massive three points that was. And we'll be catching up on the team news and the press stories that have been coming out of Dean Court over the last few games as we build up to this crunch game. We'll be looking at our opposition as well, Nottingham Forest. I think we know a few of their players. We've got our predictions as well. And look, I did an interview with the Eye Paper early on and I haven't thought about prediction and I gave them one. I'll tell you what I said. Is it positive? Wait and see. And we'll finally go into that chosen 11. I think I got 10 out of 11 in the last one, so I'm, I'm improving again. So hopefully we can get this one bang on. Absolutely huge. So, mate, seven oh. years ago mm. at the Valley, now caveat and people who, who watch the pod will know this. I was at a wedding, Disgusting. so I couldn't go. Outrageous. It, it fell at a tie and I, I I was looking at that date for a long time, thinking, oh, you know what, maybe we'd have, maybe we'd have wrapped it up by then, maybe we'll be all right, but uh, lo and behold, we pretty much had 
of course, you know, pending a 19 goal swing yeah. or goal difference. And Charlton tweak, ch cheekily tweeted that uh, we'll have to wait and see. But you know, little did I know that we'd win the title on that day. I mean, what a game, mate. And yeah. it must evoke some, some amazing memories. Yeah, what was the wedding like? It was great, <laughs> mate. For, for, food was good. Like, did a good. little boogie on the dance floor. And look, mate, I was, I was tracking it on my phone. Yeah, I bet. And uh, I was saw the fact that we were... Went one nil up, two nil up, and also saw the Watford score as well. Mm. That they were one nil up on Sheffield Wednesday, uh, three nil up, brilliant. And at that that goal, that second Matt Ritchie goal came quite late, and it was one nil mm. to Watford. I thought, you know what, I I'm putting my phone away now. I'm just going to enjoy a nice glass of wine. You forget about it. And then a guy called Ian, who might even be watching actually, Ian like came up to me and he said, and he shook my hand. He said, uh, "Congratulations, Sam." I said, you know what? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a fantastic season. Like, whilst I would have wanted to win the league, like he was like, stop right there. You don't know, do you? I was like, no, what? He said, Wednesday of equalised. I was like, Fuck off, <laughs> mad. Oh, and mate. then, lo and behold, mate, and you were there yeah. in the crowd to hear the highs and lows of things as it happened. Must have been amazing. It was. I remember um, my parents said to me like, that week, kind of week or so. I think I said that's the best day of my life three times because <laughs> I said it after the Bolton one, then obviously Charlton and then the bus parade as well. Like it kept like, it just wouldn't stop being amazing. And yeah, it was, I think what people forget about that game, I went back and watched the highlights because a few drinks were sunk and it was party time. I couldn't really remember the game apart from we were comfortable. Mm. We were awesome. And I remember afterwards, they were almost not disappointed, obviously, but they wanted to hit five, I think it was, to get the 100 goals. Yeah. And um, we really should have. We absolutely battered them. And Charlton, I think a big part of it was... Jan Kermigan, who's a bit of a legend there, so they stuck around. But a lot of the Charlton fans stayed when they were relegated, by the way, and they stayed for like you know our celebrations to kind of say this is a proper side. Yeah. Um, we were brilliant, but yeah, it just felt like we're just partying. We ain't gonna win the league, like whatever. And then it's that thing where a few murmurings, you start hearing a few cheers when nothing's happening in our game. Later on, you're thinking, no way. And I remember me and my mate just looking at our phone, and it just flashed up one-one. And I remember seeing, I think it was Elphick and Cook just looking at each other and just like we were playing the game and then Matt Ritchie like just before he received the ball was there like fist pumping mm. in the middle of the game it was um, crazy I remember our bench going mad and um, Eddie was still cool and calm yeah, and composed of, of course but it was we always talk about that great escape and how it was like a fairy tale that Fletch gets the mm. goal this felt like a fairy tale the fact that you know never in a million years did we think Watford wouldn't win at home was it when you because obviously during lockdown of uh, afcb.co.uk put out a load of um, like football revisited or whatever like mm. 90 replayed or whatever I can't remember what they called it yeah. and they did all the big games like Liverpool 4-3 and uh, like Chelsea wins etc of which there were many um, and they also did this one now Chris Temple wasn't commentating on it, but it was Adam Blackmore for Radio Solent yep. and John Williams. So I wasn't there, but I've seen the videos, but I've heard the radio sort of replay as well with the pictures. And I don't know about you, but it's like spine tingling when mm. I watch it back. And it's the spine tingling moment is when you can hear that kind of extended roar because basically Matt Richard just scored yes. and there was a cheer and you know how it goes with the sound peaks it's like it reaches a crescendo and then it dies down yeah. it died down a little bit and then there was another one and at that point William said what you know like is it like, like they scored have they scored and he's he's like frantically looking like online and then all of a sudden like yeah. Bournemouth fans are chanting we're top of the league like crazy I mean how, how quickly did it go around yeah it felt like it you kind of heard it in a distance off to the side and then what was weird is we were I was right in the corner kind of um, in the top corner and next to us was like um, it was just you could just see a, a glass box and it kind of looked a bit corporate in there and they had bought out a, a replica trophy mm. because they couldn't they knew it was only Watford to Charlton so mm. they just had the trophy at Watford thinking well Watford are going the league and then you saw them all going like all in a bit of a paddy and then they drove it you're joking yeah the, the real trophy ended up coming over because they made it in time because they thought we can get over there now um and the Bournemouth game actually had a bit of added time I think a Charlton player got injured mm. so it meant that we knew we'd won the league and we still had like five minutes left it was so weird we were just playing and everyone knew what had happened just going for the motions I think it might have been when we had him on the pod mate I think like Tommy Elfie said I can't remember the last five minutes because mm. we knew we'd won the league and we still got to play football um Really odd, but yeah, it all rippled through. There was tears. Everybody, it was it was absolutely crazy. And I remember seeing a video circulate of Sheffield Wednesday fans singing AFC Bournemouth Fair top of the league. Yeah, what what an incredible time it was. I did not have a clue about the trophy. Like, because mm. I know that 
the Charlton players did um, a lap of honour before Bournemouth yeah. came out again, and maybe that was coordinated so that they could just maybe. have that little bit of time. I love the fact that um, the Charlton guy but, but on I, the mic hands it over to Mike Botto to do his bit. Because Botto was just in the crowd as a fan. Yeah. And they just they obviously heard that our stadium announcer was just as, as an away fan. And they just started trying to find him and just like, and everyone was just pushing him down. He was like, oh, I can't do it. And they're going, no, we want you to do it. And, you know, we, I always have a, a weird little thing with Charlton now. I think obviously they still got Jason Pearce there as well. So they got yeah. a few extra cherries. But just how brilliant they were on that day. Burton Albion as well. Like, yeah, they're, they're, they're a certain romance. clubs yeah. where, we, where they're brilliant with our. And the way that Mike could um, introduce every player as they came out onto the pitch, oh. and it, it was almost like a home game, wasn't it? It was brilliant. I, I really felt for them because their players were kind of doing a lap of honour and like none of them cared. They were down. Yeah. It was a really hard season for them. But um, yeah, we played, we played really well on the day and oh, it was unbelievable. If we can have scenes anywhere near that this week, I'll be delighted, mate, because it was... Yeah, it was just an unbelievable day and night and week, to be honest. Mm. So, yeah, seven years to the day, <sighs> great years. days, and, you know, doesn't time fly? Since then, we had five years in the Premier League, and not many of us expected that. And look, we're, we're playing a game where we, we could be there again. Oh. And, it, you know, it's crept on us really quickly. But in order to get us there... We played Blackburn Rovers mm. on Saturday at Ewood Park, and a lot of us were feeling very nervous about that. But whenever we play the big teams, mate, we turn up. Mm -hmm. And you were saying like, yeah. you were going through a list of the sides yeah. in the top six. We've been pretty good. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the easiest comparison to say them three big away games we've had recently: Coventry, Huddersfield, Blackburn. All nervous, all thinking these might go for us, but will they leave it open? Three 0 in every single one. Uh, that, that's can't be sniffed at that. I said that on the fan cams. That's that's unbelievable, and that is showing that the when it matters and when the team needs to be men and kind of really go, we've just got to do this mm. today. Go toe to toe with them and show our class. We have, um, and yeah, I said the top six as it stands at the moment: Fulham, we haven't lost to them. Um, Sheffield United, we haven't lost to them. Mm. Forest have obviously only played once, but we beat them. Huddersfield, hundred percent, beaten both times. It's only Luton that we lost one with the last kick of the game. Um, mm. So we've got a decent record with them teams up there. And I know it's kind of, when you get to it, you think, oh, I would rather be playing Peterborough. Mm. But we never beat Peterborough. Yeah. We never beat Hull. We drew with Reading. We lost to Derby. There's, I, I've been saying it for a long time, and don't get me wrong, it probably hasn't equaled out because of Forrester's form. Because as you said then, before the uh, final 10, we were a lot in a lot healthier position in terms of distance to Forrest. But I remember everyone saying about the running, and I thought, it's not as bad as I... It's not as bad as it seems, because I think it suits us going to Coventry, going to Huddersfield. And it did work out like that. It was the worrying thing is I think the more disappointing one was maybe like Borough home and when it was at home we felt that that's yeah. why to counteract it a little bit is the best if it was I think I looked if it was just on away games this season we'd be up if it was just on home games we'd be outside the playoffs home form hasn't been fantastic mm. this season and I worry that maybe teams are a little bit more pragmatic when they play us at our place because mm. they respect their away from home whereas when we're playing these teams at their place they feel like We've got to go and give us our fans mm. something to show we're there to win. Um, but having said that, Forest is a bit different because they they need to win. Mm. They, they they wouldn't take a draw because mm. yeah, even exactly. though they yeah, still yeah, have they a have chance, to, yeah. they're they're going to expect Bournemouth to get a point at Millwall at least. So yeah, they're going to try and win it. It will just be interesting to see if they go gun ho from the off and catch us cold like West Brom did, like Swansea did, or they think let's not get caught early, let's keep it at nil nil till half time, and when we get our chance, take our chance. Mm. Um, but yeah, first goal feels like it's going to be huge, easy cliche, but it does feel that way, mate. Mm, it does. And <coughs> I've been, I, I saw one of your tweets actually earlier about the fact that you've been like flip flopping between oh. um, the various emotions that there are. And I feel a bit the same, but I've started to feel a little bit more positive about it. Okay. Um, and, I, you, know, you know, the fact that they, well, they can't lose and they can't really draw. I mean, they can, like pending us screwing it up. But all we need is two draws and it's done. Yeah. We've just got to not lose a football match yeah. in the last two at home. Mm. I mean, it's not a... I know they're not brilliant fixtures, but it's not bad, is it? To, to go... You've got two home games to go and if you don't lose either of them, mm. you don't even have to win them both. If you don't lose either of them, you're up. You take that. that that's... I mean, two home games, you would take that. Um, you know, so... Yeah, we've got to look at the positives. I, as you say, man, I'm flip-flopping all the time. One minute I'm going... Yeah, we turn up when it matters. We're, we're, yeah, we've only got to get two draws. He'll be fine. And then I go, oh, we're not that good on Sky. Are we that good midweek? And I'm going, oh, we haven't won midweeks. It's fair. And, I'm, and all this stuff. And it's just like that all the time. And at the end of the day, mate, like we said, 
uh, before the Blackburn game. When this team turns up and uh, they perform like they can, then then we could beat anyone in this league, particularly at home, in my opinion. And we've got players back at the right time. I think we'll go into this. Obviously, you know, talking about the Blackburn game, having Zamora back. Yeah, it's I think. Interesting. Yeah, I think a lot of people will say about oh, Gary Kay and stuff like that, but really, it's, def- it's Parker's best back four. Yeah, there, there's going to be no way that Gary Kay no, is going to be involved. No, but I think from Parker's point of view, he's got the back four he wants. Yeah. He's obviously got the goalkeeper. His midfield three would always be Lerma, Lewis, Cook and Billing for me, yeah. if he got to pick it. He's got all his wingers available that he wants, and he's got Dom Solanke fit. So he'll be, you know, really pleased. And I think I tweeted earlier as well, I mean, we've got a squad that, it's unlikely that Gary Cahill and Campwell will get in the squad for selection reasons. Mm. And I mean, that says it all. Yeah. Ethan Laird didn't make the bench the weekend. He was one of Swansea's best players at the start of the season. So it's the squad's unbelievable. And we've even got that, as we saw against Swansea. Hopefully it won't get to that point, but we've got a nice little plan B to mix it up if we need it yeah. in Brady and yeah. Kiefer Moore um, as options, which fortunately, I think it was really key that we didn't have to use that at Blackburn. Mm. I don't think either of them 100%. Well, it's quite nice that we got a, a plan B in terms of even Dembele and then almost a plan C by yeah. playing that direct route. But I'll tell you what, he was, uh, that was what an impact, by the way. He's done that a few times yeah. uh, late on in games with his just direct dribble. I don't think he's probably got the, what's the word, maybe the, the now or the, he hasn't got into Parker's style yet is why we seem to go with Anthony when it really mm. matters, which I appreciate. But when like it's kind of like just going to be free and run at them, they're tiring mm. a bit down that side. Then belly, mate. Well, I didn't. It's going to be a good player. Well, right? look, we'll get we'll get into the nuts and bolts of it, and we'll, yeah. we'll talk about Den But uh, I said on the vlog, mate, and uh, you know, call me a soothsayer or whatever. I said when Phil Bill plays yeah. well, uh, the team seems to click, and it was one of those performances. I know that it's, it says you know Phil Billing two on the score sheet, but it wasn't just that. His overall contribution yes. that game was absolutely superb and you know each and every player I thought performed really well it was like a yeah. like a well-oiled machine it was I don't think anyone had a bad game they didn't um, and like you say Billion was sensational even you know before the two goals Blackburn had a couple of chances in the first they did. half but that's all I remember I they had a header that that went a little bit wide I kind of watched it in slow motion for yeah. it was it was always going wide Travis got his hands on it had a shot from an angle that you know Travis did well to yeah. sort out but other than that they didn't pose much we were professional throughout and yeah. carving them open at will yeah definitely and I think you're going away in the championship to a team, you know, like Blackburn, a top half team in the championship, going away, you're going to have moments. They're going to mm. have chances. You're not going to have a whole game where your goalkeeper's not going to do anything, really. It's very rare. So you have to ride their moments, which I think we did. I think that was the problem against kind of West Brom and Swansea. In their moments, we weren't ready for it and we got caught cold, didn't we, early on. So that, that was pleasing. And I thought defensively as a unit, we looked pretty solid throughout. I thought Kelly and Phillips, one of their best games as a partnership for a long time. I think putting Smith back on that side was really good. Samora looked like he'd never been away. Unbelievable. Mm. Considering he's, it wasn't long ago he'd done his hamstring. Mm. Unbelievable. And he was getting up and down that Just, flank. I thought, oh, will he look a little bit rusty? He was unbelievable. Mm. Um, and yeah, he made a really good run, didn't he, at Lerman nearly first. I thought Lerman was absolutely everywhere. Um, the amount of times you see us have chances, he's in and amongst it. You mm. think he's box to box. Lewis was great. Um, Christy and Anthony were relentless throughout. And like we said about the subs, come on and made their part. And when Billing plays well, what also happens is it means Dom Solanke plays well mm. because he's not isolated and defenders don't know what to do because they think, oh, we've only got Solanke to worry about. But then when they go with him, they know Billing's floating around. So, mm. And Billing was on it, mate. And maybe a few games where he hadn't played 90 minutes and he's had a little knock. Maybe he's coming through now. I think so. I think a lot of... You often talk about kind of luxury players and stuff like that. And I think we've all had our criticism about Billing. But I think I was talking to Steve Hensman and we were saying about them kind of players are always going to be like that. Mm. So you think of, I'm trying to think of the top of my head, your Urzils, your uh, Bruno Fernandes, them sort of players, they're either 9 out of 10 yeah. or 3. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. they, they either impact the game or they're a little bit like invisible. Mm. And that happens. And at the end of the day, Phil Billings hit double figures. And I think it's definitely been over 50% that Billings has been very good for us this season. So I was really pleased to see him back, mate. What a time for him to be back to his best. And I, I thought it was interesting to sort of the reaction to his first goal, our second. He looked, he was punching the air, he looked so pleased. Mm. And I think he thought, yes, I really needed to get back on the goal, goal scoring sheet. That's a massive goal. Well, um, that was, that was two, two goals and one assist, because obviously the first goal was Great little cushion header. Long, long ball from Nat Phillips, which I've seen, I've seen mm. like more evidence of in recent games, actually. We're just mixing up, and Nat Phillips is not necessarily doing that usual U-shape yeah. and trying to find Smith or whatever. But he obviously saw like, Billing in space, curled a lovely little lofted ball to him. Billing, like you say, cushioned it off uh, Solanke to take on his chest. And it just opened up really nicely in front yeah. of him. Really good composure. Um, Billing before that, 
or was it just after? I can't remember. Probably was guilty of wasting a chance oh, whereby yeah. he cut back onto his left foot and it was blocked. Just wanted to hit it first time with his right boot, but it didn't happen. It doesn't matter. Um, and then in the second half, I thought I, ju- I just thought we were excellent. I can't yeah. really think of any chances of note. Yeah. Um, you know, for the away side, for the home side. But one thing that confused me at the time was that substitution where. Dembele was brought on for Anthony. Yeah. I, I must admit that that did confuse me. Yeah. But that worked. It definitely worked. Yeah, definitely. And I agree. I think uh, what, with how much was on the game, and we saw that Forest had looked like they're going to get the job done at Swansea, mm. um, home of Swansea, it's, you're always going to be nervous because 1 0, and you think, if we don't get this second, mm. that was the only feeling if we don't get the second. But in terms of the actual play, it was all us. I mean,. <laughs> On the vlog, I said something, because I think at that point in time, I thought it might leave us maybe a little bit defensively short, but, mm. uh, you know, it certainly didn't. And, you know, Sariki Dembele um, Brilliant, was was just superb, mate. It was just Cla- really good. Clara from Scott, I think they were, they were leaving us open. We were getting in that side quite a lot. And they were trying to push up a little bit higher and try and take a few more risks. And I think, you know, <laughs> a fair play to him. I think he thought you know what, we can really get in down that side. They're leaving it open and that's what Dembele will give you with that pace and stuff like that. So, yeah, that, that worked a treat, didn't it? He had a big part of play in both both goals, Dembele. And you can see that when we scored, I, I noticed in both goals, Lewis Cook runs straight over to him, yeah. gives him a hug and kind of like says something to him as in like, that's what you're about. And you can... I, I think he's one of them players that I think he can really... We've said a lot with... Uh, we were chatting, weren't we? We were saying about Stanislas, that mm. really sad that he's probably not going to get a goal when he isn't mm. going to get a goal this season. Whereas normally, his numbers are just superb. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, even this season, he's barely kicked the ball. He got an assist against QPR, mm. a crucial one. And I think that Dembele's going to be this sort of player that he might not play every week. He's not going to play many 90 minutes, whatever we're league, league we're in. But he's going to get goals and assists because he's so direct. And I think he's a, a really a really shrewd signing. And if we get the job done, with mate, we'll say he was he was a real crucial one in January. Mm. He he looked well. I mean, it looked like a foul. I think it was a foul yeah. on Great him. Advantage. And the referee played the advantage. Fair play to him in hindsight. And then Don Solanke then got the ball and seemed to sort of take an age. Uh, but then Phil Billing came out of nowhere. And then well, you, what a what, what a lovely finish. And being so high up, I I just thought it was in the middle of the goal, but it wasn't. It was like top left hand corner. Yeah, it was great. Um, such you know such a good finish. And like you say. With the celebration, he was he, he was properly up for it. And then it wasn't that long before Sariki was at it again. It was. And yeah, like you say, mate, it was it was weird seeing that um, when uh, when you watch it on the angle, when Solanke gets the ball, you can't even see Billing yet. And it's almost like he's just waiting and come on, Phil. And then they say, it's brilliant, brilliant goal. Um, and I promise I wasn't screaming at the ref. Ref, it's a foul. What are you doing? Well, I'm ref. Great advantage. <laughs> um, yeah, no, fair play to the ref. And yeah, like you say, he was at it again. We made that uh, change. So I'm a bit worried about, we haven't seen yet, but... Christie looked like he might have had a little knock. Oh, right. And that's why Mepham come on. Don't know if it was planned anyway, but and hopefully it was just a bit of, you know, a bit of a bump and we thought, well, we're we'll tuning it up now, yeah. bring Meps on and um, you know, change the system a little bit. And yeah, it was it was fine. And as you say, mate, Sariki was at it again. He nicked the ball off off mm. one of the defenders. He's good like that, quite feisty, and gets in there and and then a little nutmeg. It was two nutmegs, technically, it was wasn't it? Brilliant. Nutmegs. And Billing just took control, mate. And He'd probably be a little bit disappointed, mm. but I think he thinks Spinning's going to go across him and he just drills that, it. That's what I would have thought yeah. was a keeper, yeah. Drills it near post, keeps it low, really good finish. A bit like the done. Forest, when he scored against Forest, who we'll be talking about, that was a you know similar to, a sort of finish in at the near post. Yeah, yeah, really good, really good finish, kept it low. You Sometimes, I think, sometimes a billion that's off form, he kind of scuffs that skies mm. in, and that's a player that's just scored a goal. Really, really good finish, and that was when you know we knew it was it was all done and dusted, mate. Um, so yeah, r- really enjoyable and a really good goal, and we were just... We were having them at will there, and like I say, then we could bring Mappen on, get Christie off, and then we could even rest Dom Solanke after. Mm, yeah, that's right. So Jamal Lowe came yeah. on for him as well, and that was that. And yeah, we were absolutely all over them in so many departments. We had uh, 13 shots to their nine. We didn't pass as much as them, though. Right, okay. We didn't pass as much as them. And also, uh, in terms of the possession wise, not sure. Uh, what that was, we'll we'll find out the stats for that as well. But I'm just I'm, I'm just looking through mm. who scored dot com in terms of the heat maps. We were absolutely all over them. Yeah. In terms of that, but yeah, uh, so so pleased with that performance. It was it was just what we needed momentum wise, mentally or whatever. That you know that that Swansea comeback's probably got yeah. you know quite a lot gonna, in terms of the contribution. I'm going to do it to you now. You're going to guess the possession because I've got it. It surprised me. Um. 
I felt like we were all over them. And but I've like. got a feeling it's one of them where we probably had less possession. Mm. I don't know. Um, I'm going to go for 42% Bournemouth possession. Not bad. We're 38. Really? They had 62. And I said to you uh, before we before we started doing this, we were talking about different things. And the lowest possession we had this season was um, the 4-0 win against Swansea. We've just won 3-0 with less than 40% possession. And I think this is what we've been... You don't want to get back into it. But this is what we've been saying all season about you know when we've had most of the ball... We've ended up drawing with the likes of Peterborough and Hull. When we've had less of the ball, we just kill teams on the break, and we just and it looks like it's attack after attack because they're keeping all the ball for a little bit. We break it up, transact, transition straight away, we're in, um, and that's what happens. And I think that's what'll be interesting to go to this Forest game. Everyone will be saying they need to win; they'll go for us. But if they look at it carefully, they'll be going. But if we just go toe to toe for Bour- with Bournemouth, they're going to kill us. Mm. So I think they'll have to be a little bit more shrewd about it and think. We keep it nil nil to half time. Maybe we can you know, then open up near the end. So we'll if see. if Forest do get a result, it would be a Steve Cooper masterclass. And look, we we will be talking about the opposition. Of course, we've just mentioned Blackburn, but here it is, all about the tricky tree. So after an important win at Ewood Park, scoring three goals and keeping a clean sheet. We've now got two games to finish the season, and it starts with a battle for second place against Forest. Just a reminder that this game is live on Sky. It's an earlier time for an evening game at 7pm. Like you said, Tom, they've got to come at us. Yeah. They can't lose. We play better against the better teams. And they're similar to us in that when they've had big wins, mm. I mean, their 5-1 win against Swansea, they had 30% possession. Swansea 30%. Yeah, yeah. And I think it is one of them things, Swansea are obviously trying to play a certain style. We've spoke about that in previous videos when we've just played them. But um, you go toe-to-toe, you go toe to toe, like they very, very remind me of us when we first got to the Championship. We played some really good football under Eddie and we got some really good results like Swansea have. But we always took a few beatings mm. and we come 10th that season. And Swansea ain't going to be far off that, do you know what I mean? It's a, very, a lot of parallels there. But Swansea are a team that I think under that style, they'll probably get stronger next year, mm. like we obviously did. So yeah, Forrester are, are similar in terms of you know, they're quite happy to count on them. They've got, some, they've got a bit of pace in behind. People like, you know, Jed Spence from right back, whether it be that or Brennan Johnson and Sam Surridge. So, yeah, um, yeah, really interesting that there's there's a lot of parallels there. And, oh, I'm just getting nervous more talking about it, mate. When we play the better teams, though, mm. we, we do look a class apart, which, which is something that are, yes, their form has been good, but they haven't... They haven't been getting any results that are... You know, look, their 5-1 against Swansea was impressive. Four-goal margin. We did that. We didn't concede during it. Um, they And their their results have largely mirrored ours. They lost at Luton yep. uh, due to a skanky goal. Ours was last minute. And you're thinking, really, are are, are they sort of better than us? No, I don't no. think they are. So, you know, toe-to-toe, I think... I. I yeah. genuinely think that we could do it, but we just have to be on it. It's, you know, like it's ours to lose. It's ours cool. to lose. It's not like we're going to get overpowered by a better side. It's all who turns up on the night. It's as simple as that. It's it's which team which team perform on the night. Um, and on one hand, you'll be thinking, how much does momentum play? How much does form play? And, and that's where you lean towards Forest because the form's unbelievable, hence why it's only three points now. On the other hand, you go, all right, let's do that like a lot of teams do before a big game or do a combined eleven. And I'm not giving Forrest any stick. There'd only be a few that would get him for them. Mm. Player for player. You could argue Steve Cook. Um, mm. I think uh, Jed Spence, as I mentioned, Brennan Johnson, they got a few, but I'm not being funny, but Sam Surridge was let go because he wasn't good enough. Um, and, you know, he's, he's obviously having a pearl patch. He's a good player. And this might come back to bite me, but he ain't getting on our bench. No. Uh, you know what I mean? And I, I'm telling you now that Todd Cantwell gets on theirs at least. Yeah. So I think player for player, this is what we said all season, I think, I, I probably think, be interesting with Fulham, but I'd probably say we're the best um, player for player. But as you say, it all, all turns up on the nightmare and how the game goes and who feels the pressure a little bit more. Um, I look at it weirdly with their rivals with Derby and they were on fire and you thought, oh my God, Rooney's going to do something special here. As mm. soon as it went, they might stay up, you know, couldn't win. Mm. As soon as they thought they'd, you know, they're no fear and Forrest have come out of nowhere and it's all like, bloody hell, look at Forrest go, no fear. And now they're going, you can do it, you know, you've only got to beat Bournemouth and now will they freeze? We'll wait and see. And it's a bit like us as well. you just got to win at home. Yeah. Will we freeze? And as we've said a lot in this video, when we've had them big games of late, we haven't froze. We've turned up. And they've got a history of freezing. Have they? I won't mention Swansea when uh, all that happened. When they were... Yeah. You know, and then I think Swansea scored loads of goals and they had like one more goal than them. And I think uh, they made sixth right? and Forest yeah. finished seventh just outside the yeah, playoffs. Yeah, it was, not it? 
whether that was last season or the season before last, I can't remember, can't honestly, remember. All, yeah. all of the COVID football sort of merges into one somewhat. But anyway, um, team news, reaction from Dean Cole, Mr. Park Espresso. So yeah, due to the quick turnaround, not as much uh, in terms of direct Scott Parker quotes, but looking at some of the articles in the Daily Echo, Adam Smith, who had a cracking game at the weekend, believes that the current crop of Cherries players probably have more ability than the side that secured promotion back in 2015. When asked how it compared, he said, to be honest, it's totally different. The generations are different, but ability-wise, we've probably more ability in this team, especially in the attacking areas. But yes, two great teams, two different teams, so it's very hard to compare. And he's a player that I thought is, is, is brilliant when he's back, and I'm not sure what the stats are, but they're very favourable. When he's on the pitch, yeah. we are we're really good, and we, and we don't lose as many points. Yeah. as to when he's injured. A few players like that. I think um, Smith's obviously one of them. I think Lerma's probably a similar one that you don't realise how good they are until they're not there. And then you start... Because I think a lot of people at start the season go, well, if, if Smith's out for a few games, you've got Stacey, and now we've got Laird in. And then you realise when he's not there for a few games, go, oh, God, we could do with him. Especially when you've got quite a, a young defence with you know Zamora, Nat Phillips and, yeah. and Lloyd Kelly. He does give a bit of experience there. He wins good fouls. Yeah. He drives forward with the ball. He's, he's a very clever player. And he's more experienced than I think people give him credit for. He's played a lot of football at a, a high level. So, yeah, delighted to have him back for, for the business end, mate, definitely. Um, he's He's been vital for us in this little little mini kind of run we've had, uh, especially in them away games. He's been great and he can fill in at left back when he needs to. But I'm really happy to have him back on his side now with Zamora back. Mm. Crucial. Now, hopefully, the players in our squad that do have experience in the playoffs won't, won't need to use that experience. But Jamal Lowe, he was asked by the Daily Echo about how hungry he is to clinch promotion after missing out with Swansea last season. And he told the Echo that it was probably one of the most devastating things that's happened to me on a football pitch. Getting so close, just 90 minutes away from the Premier League football and not making it. That's definitely given me the fire to push on and Bournemouth as well. You can't forget, it got to the semi-finals last season and that fire as well. We've got, he, he uses this phrase, the fire, but look, it's, um, you know, there's a burning desire within the squad, mate, to avoid the playoffs. Yeah, ironic really, because we're only playing this game because there was a storm last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a fire and not a storm. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think people, that, that sort of experience can, can only help you, in my opinion. Um, you know, when you've got players in around it that have been there and done it, like your Adam Smiths, and then you've got people that know what it's like to just miss out. Mm. Obviously, it was in the playoffs with Jamal Lowe, which hopefully he won't have to do, but he would have felt like he was close to Premier League football mm. last season, and, and he's going to feel like he's even closer this time. And he's he's one that's been really crucial. He's loved by the fans, and he's scored some really key goals. And he's another player, mate. This is what I mean. I don't ex we'll go on to the T, our kind of chosen 11. I don't expect Jamal Lowe to start. And I don't expect Keith from all to start. I mean, they're, they're both on the bench. Mm. I mean, I'll be funny, but that's, that's a hell of a front line in the championship. So, shows the depth, mate. And uh, yeah, hopefully, I think these players are up for it. And um, I think oh, both sets of players will be up for it, mate. It's going to... Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Huge. Well, look, AFC Bournemouth team news. Jordan Zamora was limping near to the end of the Blackburn game, but he finished strong. Hopefully, just a bit of cramp and nothing more than that. You mentioned Ryan Christie as well. It mm. remains to be seen, but by all accounts, he is doing okay. If you're a Forest fan, you could probably look at Dom Solanke as being one of the players to watch. Mm. You know, why don't you give me a left field out? You know, a kind of choice of a player that they should maybe keep their eyes on that we maybe wouldn't mention. Maybe Jay Z. You know. Yeah, I was, I was thinking that. Maybe Jordan Zamora. Just, just to the. Just for the fact that I think, you, like you say, you always look at your Slankies, your, your Billings, and then they go, well, they've got Lerman Cook in the middle, mm. blah, blah, blah. But I think Zamora's kind of, he is a little, that left side is a little bit more unknown this season, mm. isn't it? And He gets forward a lot. And I think what we'll say is, as much as we'll, uh, I'm sure plenty of us, myself included, will be going, Jed Spence is probably the best right back in the league, uh, right wing back he'll probably play, Brennan Johnson go to that side. So they've got some good players to that side. But that also means that they're very forward minded, and if they leave any gaps, Zamora will be up and back all game long. and. It could be one of them that both of them could get exposed at either end. It will be kind of, you know, Spence v Zamora is going to be a, a real battle. Kind wow. of which one catches the other one out. They've both got a lot of pace. So that'll be interesting. But yeah, I think Zamora. And equally, I think if you think you're getting the job done and all you're keeping Slanky quiet, big keeper off the bench. Yeah. Nice little plan B slash C that we got there as well. Right. Let's talk about the opposition.
So this game will see the return and a big welcome to our old captain, Steve Kirk, even if he is in an opposition shirt. He joined our club on loan in October 2011 and then permanently on the 4th of January 2012. And then nearly exactly 10 years later to the day, that run came to an end and he left to join Nottingham Forest. And uh, the two C's have, have inspired Forrest to great things. Uh, Steve Cook, since he's been there, has been exemplary and Forrest fans absolutely love him. But Steve Cooper's arrival did big things for them as well. When we played them, it wasn't Cooper, but it was another C, Chris Hooton, that was there. And let's be fair, it wasn't great to watch by all accounts. Let's relive the day. <laughs> Poor start to the season under Chris Hoon. Great away day for us, though, wasn't it? Loved that. Feels like a lifetime ago. It was our first away one, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Feels like a lifetime ago. You know, Brooksy scoring and getting sent off. And mm. um, yeah, we, we had, I mean, both teams so different, obviously, with, we all know with Forrest. I mean, they started really poorly and now they've got a different manager. Mm. But e even us, we had Ibsen Rossi in the team there, who's out on loan. He yeah. hadn't played for ages. I think Meppen was playing at full back for a bit. You know, we didn't. I think our only sub was like Christian Sadie coming on, who's out on mm. loan at Burton. So we were kind of down to the bet. It's completely different, two completely different sides. Mm. Two really completely different sides. But yeah, it was a good way to start the season um, for us, not for them. But um, yeah, we've both gone in different trajectories since then. But yeah, um, yeah their change of manager was obviously the right decision. I felt for you because I thought you'd do a good job for him. It just didn't work. Mm, absolutely. So yeah, Forrest lost their first four games, including our away game, which was their fourth straight defeat. They then drew away at Derby and lost their next two. The second defeat being at home against Middlesbrough. That was the end of Chris Hooton's time at Forrest, having been there for just less than a calendar year. He was replaced by the former Swansea City manager, Steve Cooper. He was in charge of the Swans for two seasons, uh, got to the playoffs, including a final uh, last time round, but decided to call it a day. And yeah, I, Forrest won their next game after Hooton left and then Cooper took full charge. And yep. his first game was away at Millwall, which finished in a one-all draw. He saw his side then win uh, four of their next games, three away from home, and he'd he'd steadied the ship. And you've got to say, mate, in terms of his footballing now, see, so he, he knows how to get the best out of players, doesn't he? Yeah. Wow, what a job he's done! Unbelievable job. And uh, we spoke because uh, of both teams playing them recently. We spoke a bit about Swansea, and they're struggling without without him now. You know, um, you know it's going to take them a bit of time to rebuild. I think he's yeah, really top manager. He's probably unlucky with with what Luton have done. I think um, Jones got the manager of the season, hasn't he? Um, it, it always surprised me these awards. Wait till it's done because if yeah, Forrest yeah. go up, yeah. surely he's got to get it. You'd think so. um, but what I will say is he's had two playoffs that he hasn't done. I'm happy for it to be third time lucky. If they want to win the playoffs, he's got to win the playoffs. Any third third time lucky yeah. win the playoffs. There's no point of being us. But no, it all serious has done an unbelievable job. Made some as we know too well. Made some really really good additions to the side. Um, I was thinking then. I think because I remember thinking it was really weird when they got Sam Surridge from mm. Stoke because he'd barely been there. And I think. 
Actually, I think he had him at Swansea yeah, on loan. Did, did, yeah. So there's obviously something there. I'll tell you what, he's obviously getting the best out of Sam Surridge. We couldn't quite do it. Stoke couldn't do it. And he's certainly doing it. Um, we, all, we all like Sam and know he's a good player. But we never thought he'd be this level. No. So, you know, fair play to him. And he's he's got a really good balance there, being hard to break down, but also score a lot of goals and play good football. So, yeah, he's, he's going to be a top manager, mate. And whether they do it this season, they'll if they don't do it this season, they'll certainly be there or thereabouts next. Yeah, absolutely. So in their away games since he's taken charge, they've won nine, drawn five and lost three. Their last away game was a 1-0 win at already promoted Fulham at Craven Cottage, Nottingham Forest. Most recent game, of course, we know, was that home match against Swansea where they won 5-1. In their last six away matches, Forest have won three, drawn two, lost one, scoring seven conceding three. Bournemouth in their last six home games have won two and drawn four, scoring eight, conceding five. So we've talked about one C and then we'll talk about another Steve Cook. Firstly, this was the message that Steve Cook sent us back in February. Hi everyone, just wanted to say that I'm really looking forward to coming back this uh, this weekend. Um, obviously going to be a really strange game for myself and my family, but um, yeah, it's going to be uh, a great occasion. Um, <clears throat> just wanted to wish everyone the best for the season um, and you know hopefully Bournemouth go on and um, get promoted to, to the Premier League and you know um, I'll be watching on and uh, supporting the path of tomorrow so um, looking forward to it hopefully see some familiar faces um, and I'm sure I'll give you all a wave cheers and of course at that point in time Tom who, who knew what was to come both yeah. on the pitch but also off the pitch, it was Storm Eunice. Our stadium was was damaged, couldn't get it sorted in time. It was a very late announcement. Forest fans thought that we were doing it on purpose and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. it was rescheduled to the 3rd of May, but bloody hell, who who knew and who thought that no. that match would be so pivotal? Bloody I, hell. I think even Forest fans, if they were being really honest about it, thought that was an annoying reschedule, but because Bournemouth would probably get it done by then. Um, I think we probably did, if we're being honest about it. I thought, ah... That's nice because I think we'll already be promoted by the Forest game. But because of ours and Forest, Forest, Forest is form, it's meant that it's, you know, uh, like cup final, like we say. But um, yeah, I think there'll be a bit of banter about that one from the Forest fans with um, calling it off the storm. But we certainly didn't have a, we didn't have any kind of case to make when a few days later we also got another game called off away yeah. at Swansea. That was enough for the two of us. Yeah. So yeah, the storm caused a few problems. But yeah, nice cookie to get a message. And um, saying that, we just talked about seven years to the day that he was lifting a trophy for Bournemouth. Now he's competing against Bournemouth to try and do the same thing. The yeah, reaction's going to be um, positive, I'm sure. Oh, of course, yeah. Standing ovation, I'd like to think. He's an oh, absolute legend of the football club. I'd even think like Sam Surridge, who's probably going to start the game, will get a nice little clap. It won't be the same as Cookie, but yeah. he'll get, if Graben was playing, he'd have the same. I don't think any of them three players that are previous Bournemouth players have anything but love from the from the majority of, mm. of fans anyway. So, um, yeah, I hope he... I hope he'll give him a little clap. I'm sure he'll give us a little clap. I hope, I hope he's happy and then I'll be cheering him on in the playoffs, hopefully. So, uh, look, I feel like I'm tempting fate by saying a load of things here, but I can't remember a match this season where we've started and kicked towards the North Stand in the first half. Mm. I just wonder if if the toss is won, whether they would want to mix it up. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I, I think, would hate that. Yeah, so would I. But I think, I think teams that, that know we like that Sometimes do try and change it, obviously, if they win the toss. Like I said to you, I always remember O'Driscoll, when he left us years ago, he done it straight away. But equally, I think the reason we get it so much is teams don't bother because they think, well, well we want to shoot against our fans yeah, as well. Yeah, they're right alongside them. Yeah, so hopefully it won't. But like you say, if, if I'm Cookie or, or even Surridge, I'd probably be saying, if, if you get the chance, switch them around, they went like that. So, little and things, isn't it? Do, they, do Forrest still play with three at the back? Yeah, they have been, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cook they, in the middle, I love it. They will know our weaknesses, won't they? They will know which players to expose. You know, Cookie's going to be, mm. um, you know, saying all the right things because you know, like, obviously, he wants to win this. Of you course. know, Sam Surridge is going to have to point, have a point to prove as well. Yeah. Um, there's there's going to be a lot of motivation on their side. You know, not least because winning will yeah. effectively mean that they're in control. Yeah. But also uh, for personal. Mm. Personal pride as well, and also to uh, to maybe you know get one back at Parker, which you know Steve Cook was 
out of favour or whatever. Uh, you know, I don't know the ins and outs, no. and you know, maybe we'll never know. But I'm sure he'll want something to say. Absolutely, because I think it's it's pretty clear, like to say, without knowing the ins and outs, that Steve Cook left because he wanted our plans for whatever reason that is. It was um, you know, whether it was our manager's decision or, or people above, he wasn't in our plans. Um, and he was deemed that he wasn't as good as a centre half we had available. So he'll he'll want to come in here and go, You should have kept me. Mm. Um, and equally Sam Surridge would say, I didn't quite get the opportunity here. He'll he'll probably think I didn't get enough of a run in the side. Mm. You know, when people like Dom's form weren't great, I didn't get enough of a run. Um, and I'll show you that you've missed out on a good young striker that come through the academy here. So yeah, they've certainly got a point to prove, but as you say, mate. The, just just the magnitude of the football match, mate, is going to mean they they all going to prove something for their you know, their travelling fans are going to be absolutely bouncing. So yeah, everything's on this game, mate, and it's it is going to be who turns up and who goes where when it matters. And oh, it's going to be nervy, mate. It's going to be nervy. I I do still think, regardless of the fact that they score goals and we're at home, I do think there'll be an edgy uh, start to the game. I think both teams will play with that handbrake on and be a bit nervy. There's always Steve Cook's always got a game in him though, where something catastrophic will happen. Well, hopefully. Um, it could be tomorrow. Yeah, I think he was always... Um, I think we always had that with our defenders. We were always told to play out quite a bit. And occasionally he got he got caught a few times and got a bit of criticism of that particular Premier League. But he's also a player that, you know, I think you mentioned earlier when we were talking about games we watched back, the Liverpool game, you know, when he scored a goal. He's, he's still a he's still a, a good player. We talked about Adam Swift having that experience. I think Cookie's got that for them. Yeah. Um, real leader in that in that back three for him. But he, and he'll also know... He'll probably be thinking, oh, God, Dom Solanke's going to be a tough one for me. Yeah, uh, you Dom would beat him in a foot race, race, would he? Yeah, absolutely, I would yeah. have thought so. Um, so that's, I'd, I'd say Cookie's probably got a little bit more strength, but mm. yeah, they'll. I think they'll both fancy each other. That'd be really, that'd be really exciting. Um, and yeah, and as, as I briefly mentioned, their wing-backs like to bomb on, and I think that, that could give us, you know, as I said, we've gone to the team, but could give our, our wide men some freedom as well in behind that will cause them problems and try and, when they got that back three, try and leave Cookie exposed, try and get them, the two centre-halves either side, to be stretched out and having to cover their full-back all the time and then Billing can pick up pockets and we can go from there. I remember, in the, obviously, the Premier League's a different level of football, but I always remember certain teams always targeting our right defensive side, so Adam Smith. Especially with um, Hart, Andy Carroll did it this season. Yeah, right? that's right. That That's my concern and pace as well. He, he, he could get done and Nat Phillips as well isn't, isn't yeah. the quickest um, Lloyd Kelly is obviously you know the get out of jail card but he can't he, he probably wouldn't sweep up on yeah. that right hand side I don't know um, that's you know that's my concern about yeah. where they might hit us hard. I think the only the the thing that makes it such a leveller is I uh, mentioned that that right side is very quick for him Brennan Johnson likes to go over to that right side a little bit and Jed Spence but on their left side they'll probably play Jack Cole back at left wing back who's well mid 30s now mm. And he hasn't got lightning pace. So so I wonder if that might suit us, as you say, because I don't think that's their side with, our, with their kind of legs, if you like. And equally, it's the same with ours. Mm. So I think it will be a more who who wins on that other side. But, you know, Surridge will probably drift over to that side a little bit more, which will be interesting. Um, I mean, I'd like to think... We haven't seen Surridge for a while, and he's obviously hit a purple patch and he's doing really well. But in a, in a battle, I think Nat Phillips yeah. should be able to boss him. But who knows? I think the midfield would be really key, I think. Garner in there for theirs that for them has been brilliant in particular. So yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting in there and they've got they've got some players all over the pitch as of we mate. So I think I think you can almost say, Oh, battle there, battle there, battle there. Who turns up on the night? Who turns up on the night? So yeah, let's check a look at the league table. Bournemouth on eighty two points there. We have picked up nine points in our last five. And look at that, Forest in third, seventy nine points, twelve from their last 15. Huddersfield Town also, we've got to give a mention to them as well. Mm. Uh, I mean, their, their form has been exceptional and, you know, Carlos Corbera and they've done, done an incredible yeah. job um, looking like that uh, they could pose a threat in the playoffs, I'm certain, but I don't think automatics is for them. But you never know, crazier things have happened. Tom, can you remember the last time we played Forest at Dean Court? Can you, can you remember what happened? I mean, I'd like to think we would have won last season. Mm. Uh, so it would have been COVID, obviously. We definitely beat them. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember if it was Tyndall or Woodgate. I Ooh. can't remember when we played them. can't remember. Um, it would have been Tyndall. Right. So we probably, yeah, we, we were unbeaten for a long time. So mm. we probably... Be yeah, I think we beat them. I can't remember what the score was. I had 2-1 or something. 2-0. The goals came from uh, Junior Stanislas, who put away a pass from, from David Brooks in the third minute. And then in the second half, Stanislas scored his second from the penalty spot after Solanke yeah. was fouled. So yeah. it was a Stanislas brace in our home games against Forest. Bournemouth have won five, drawn one, lost 
two. So that bodes well. So injury, injury wise, mate, they've got a few players out, mm. haven't they? Including an ex Cherry that yeah. I, I, I would never want to face because he's yeah. he can always poach. I agree. Yeah, I'm I'm gutted for him. Like if it were to be playoffs and stuff, that he can't play a part. He's he scored goals in playoffs before. He's he's a really good player, Lewis Graben, and he's captain the side a lot. And he and yeah, like I like I mentioned earlier, we we got a lot of love for him here. Scored a lot of goals for us in the championship and. Yeah, he was a great player for us in League One as well. So yeah, and I'm as you said, mate. I he scored against us uh, for Norwich as well yeah, when he's been yeah. back played us. So yeah, he's a player that I just always worry about. He could just nick a goal. So I'm glad he's out for selfish reasons. I think I said about Jack Colback, left wing back, because Max Lowe is still out. Yeah, that's right. Who can also play there? I think they got centre half Sos out as well, yeah, they? Like so, yeah. um, and then they had, they had a few doubts, didn't they? Is it? Um, is Keenan Davis a doubt? I don't know if he. I think he might be one that was rumored to be a doubt. Yeah, he, he's out for the rest or is he of the out? season. Yeah. So that's a plan. That's probably yeah, because that's why Surridge has really come in, and you know they probably would be thinking Grabs and Davis are probably their main two. So it's big for Surridge to to play. And I know Zinc and Agle was a doubt, but then he played yes. against Swansea, yeah, so I'm guessing right. he'll be all right. And he's probably got. We're saying about people that got points approved. He's on loan from Watford, isn't he? Mm. Or the signing from Watford. I think they got Angana's on loan from yeah, Watford. Yeah. Oh, so there's God. a little. So yeah, there's a few little things there. But he's he's a decent player, mate. Oh, it's tasty, isn't it? Mm. Right, so the Nottingham Forest player to watch then, if you had to pick one. Brennan Johnson. I think if you take away any sentiment behind Colin kind of your and your Cooks, I think Brennan Johnson is a player that, that I really like and he's probably a player that, if I think Celsius, if we were to get promoted and they don't go up, could we try and nick him? Because mm. I, I think he's, he's got a lot about him. He's, he's, a really, he's only young, really good player, can play wide, can play up top, so a lot of pace. So yeah, he'll be he'll be one to watch for sure. They've got a distinct advantage for having players that uh, maybe haven't got the Premier League experience uh, that they could probably keep the nucleus of their squad together for the yeah. next season. Steve Cooper could you know probably possibly even win the league with that lot. But I feel as though if it was us to miss out and we stayed down, then we would almost have to start again. Yeah, probably. Based on the fact that you know Salank will probably go, Lerma maybe, Lloyd yeah. Kelly. There's a, there's a number of players that would just be out the door. Yeah, definitely, I agree with that. People like Brennan Johnson, you know, like you say, Cooper can kind of say, look at how close we were with the start we had. Stick around another season. Mm. You know, you're only young. You'll get your opportunity, but stick with us and you, you can get promotion with us. And um, yeah, whatever happens, if they're, in that, if they're in this league next season, they'll be they'll be a force for sure. It's time to get nervous again. The referee okay. tomorrow is Stuart Atwell. He usually takes Premier League games. He's the man in charge. We had him in our last season in the top league for four games: three against London clubs, home against West Ham, Arsenal, and Palace, and away at Leicester so Atwell is the referee right we might need a drink tomorrow uh, let's do pubs and predictions yeah I, I think that the pubs are going to be doing a roaring trade in the <laughs> afternoon Look, if you're a Forest fan and you're wondering where to go Check our away day fans guide. Just at the top of the screen is a card that you can click and that tells you where abouts the pubs are. Please note that um, we've got a Weatherspoons featured in that called the Christopher Creek that is now no longer open by the Lansdowne Roundabout. But everywhere else, including the Bell in Pokesdown, the Cricketers um, on Wyndham Road, also the Firkin Shed, which is very small, and also in Boscombe, the Mellow Mellow, where you'll have a sing song and Maroy's Bar. They can just ask, they've got enough of them, an ex-Bournemouth player, just ask them where to go. Just ask them. You've got enough of them. And if you're a Bournemouth fan, of course, uh, you can go to those places as well. Uh, but also, of course, the 1910 bar, uh, the QP, places like that as well. The Brunny's always good as well. So, yeah, do check that out and you know, we'll hopefully see you at, um, before the game at some point, Great Escape Bar or whatever, or if not, 1910. Um, predictions then. Let us know what you think about how you feel uh, put your predictions down below. We'll read it and, um, yeah, hopefully, if you're a Bournemouth fan, they'll come true. Tom, how are you feeling for it? I mean, I haven't got a clue, so I'm just going to be um, blindly positive, I think. I'm just going to, all I can think of in my head is, we've spoken about it a few times, big games that matter. Coventry 3 0, Huddersfield 3 0, Blackburn 3 0. When we got promoted last time, home to Bolton 3 0. 3 0. I mean, it, I'm going to be free up. I'll go free now. Does it, um, on Twitter and stuff, I don't, I don't, I've, I've not been looking at Twitter as much, but um, I don't like seeing all these, the, the Forest fans are so confident. We're you not in the Forest, we're coming for you. Mm. And <sighs> You would be with the form you're on. If they're not confident now, when when can they be? The form mm. they're on, no fear. They, they, they feel like they can beat anyone at the moment, and rightly so. They've just got their Fulham and one. They see our forms a bit like that. So, yeah, I, I expect them to be confident, mate. Of course they are, but... You know, it's still a big game and nerves will get to players. 
and I feel like this group have shown a lot that, that they can stand up when needed. So I'm going to go 3 0 just for the hope that the, my main hope is if we do get the first goal, they've got no choice but yeah. to go because then they have to score two. Yeah. Um, and I just, yeah, my hope is that we nick one before half time, probably around 40 minutes when I'm having a drink and miss it. Um, yeah, and go one and up, and then they come at us, and we catch them on the counter a yeah. couple of times. But who knows, mate? I did an interview with the eye paper, that, and I did a um, prediction for that as well. Mine was two one. Um, and to us, yeah. And yeah, to us, and it will spark scenes if that's the case. It could be a, a night that will go on and on and on. And if it is, uh, I'm staying out. I'm. Do, uh, do you know what? I'll put the vlog together. I, I will get the vlog out first thing. <laughs> Half cut, whatever, I'll do it. Um, but, um, and we'll talk about legit, no, let's not talk about logistics of what could happen because let's just, let's, let's, let's worry about it. Let's worry about our chosen level now, yeah? Let's do it. Oh, here we go then, Tom. Here we go. Here we go. There's the pitch. Um, talk me through your 11 then. Mark Travers. Mark Travers in goal, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, this is where I got, got it wrong at the weekend was I wasn't expecting Zamora to come straight back in. As long as he's got through that okay, it is a quick turnaround, but as long as he's got through that all right, he was brilliant. So he's mm. going to stay in at left back, which will mean Smithy will keep his right, right back and it'll be that centre-half pairing, who, one of their best um, performances as a pairing, I felt, at the weekend. Uh, Nat Phillips and Lloyd Kelly. That's your back four. I can see how this <coughs> is shaping up already, mate. Go on then. Three, three in midfield. Lerma, Lewis Cook, of course. Lewis the deepest. Lerma would be a bit more box to box, and then obviously with a position that's kind of been debated for a while, Billing was just scored two goals. Ring to drop him after that, he was brilliant. So he's going to be the most advanced of the, in that central area. Probably the only positions that you think might, let's put Solanke in, by the way, mm. um, obviously. But the only position you kind of think, oh, there's maybe could he make a change? Could he, you know, see how Dembele did when he come on, and they'll take risks at that right side, could Dembele get in? He's Maybe. More, he's got more of an impact when he comes on though, hasn't I he? I probably agree, and probably similarly with Jamal Lowe, mm. and then people like Brady and, and more, like we've said, are, are good options, but I think he'll stick with it. Um, it's going to be unchanged for me. So Ryan Christie will be off the right, and Jane Nantley off the left, but good options on the bench to mix it up if we need to, mate. Oh, I just... How do you... How, go, look, look, just, <laughs> you know, just pretend that thing's not rolling anymore. Have a, have a sit, sit back. Oh, how, how I normally you, sit in the boxes yeah. as well. <laughs> how, are you, how are you really feeling? How are you really feeling? Um, I'm, I'm all right in terms of, I, the more I talk about it, I think, I think we'll be okay. I mean, but, you look at it and you think, well, we've got to really, surely. Like the, yeah. even, well, I mean, like, yes, they've got good players, but even player for player. Yeah. I d the only thing you would change is the form. Apart yeah. from the form, but equally, you could look at that and go, we just won 3-0. If you want to go really instant form, mm. um, we both just smashed teams away from home. But us away mm. from home, them at home, sorry. Well, we scored three goals in, in, in yeah, you know, three goals against Swansea, three goals Yeah, six of our last two, and, and they've done the same, haven't they? 5 one one nil. So, yeah, I think really kind of instant form is not too different. But over a longer period, as we said, before the last 10, we had an 11-point gap on them. So that's, that's a concern. But apart from form, you'd go, you'd want to, at the end of the day, regardless of form, you'd want to be the home team with a home team. Mm. You'd want to have Dom Solanke leading the line over Sam Surridge. You would, mm. uh, you know, as much as Surridge had good form. You'd, there's loads of positions. You'd rather have Billing over Zinconagel, mm. probably. You'd, we've, got, we've got great players and, and we're at home and we're going to get it, get it rocking. And yeah, I, right now, I think we're going we're gonna to have enough. And when I say that, I think even if it's a draw, mm. because I think as much as I'm desperate to just finish it off, get the job done, mm. realistically, if we were to draw the game, we'd be going... We just need a point at home on the last day. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a great position to be in. So right now, I would take a draw because the defeat for me is it's done mm. because they ain't gonna lose. They ain't gonna not beat Hull. What's What's nice is that we're. I know the start of the season was very fruitful in terms of the you know points that we'd accrued, but the performances weren't overly brilliant. We were just getting the job done, but the the margin of error was slim, and we were always walking a bit of a tightrope. Yeah. But I find it quite nice that we're actually playing some good football now as well yeah. and we're scoring goals so I'm sure that's going like, to be a big you know a, a big thing for the players yeah. uh, it, it's not like we are playing this kind of robotic mechanical brand of football I think it was really good in the last game and if they can do that again um, happy days N nerves will they play a part I mean they will but I think I think any football you've got to have, you've got to have nerves I think it's, it's drives you doesn't it yeah I think it's almost a bad thing if the players weren't nervous you've got to have a bit of nerves but then you've got to turn that in and you know and focus that the right way 
Um, I always remember, obviously it's a completely different uh, team and, and squad now, but that Bolton game where we obviously got promoted to the Premier League for the first time, a lot of nerves on that. And I remember seeing, you know, there's been loads of documentary, like little montages since, obviously. And I remember a lot of the players saying that there was more excitement that we're at home yeah. and all we got to do is win and we're up. What an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. What an opportunity. We're not messing this up. No way are we messing this up. And I like to think we'll do the same, mate. I really do. I, I, yeah, I like to think so. But um, it's it's so nervy because we haven't even got... I just Because of that fact that if we lose, it feels like that's it. And, yeah. But we still got play. It's mad. But mm. I just... Yeah, I, I, think we'll, I think we'll just do enough. I really do. And I'm, I'm hopeful. And I just hope it'll be a, be a nice... A nice night and we can just enjoy the final day mate but definitely nervous from my side but um, I just want it to fast I just want to fast forward time I don't want to play the, I'm I'm just I don't even want it to happen mate I'm, I don't know what I'm going to be like um, my dad always reminds me that when we got promoted from League 2 we were 5-2 up mm. at Link, against Lincoln and I went underneath in the concourse I couldn't cope with the last 5 minutes mm. we were 5-2 up so I'm definitely nervous for this one mate um, <laughs> let's see what happens nothing we can do about it we just got to get behind the boys and uh, be that kind of 12th man as the cliche goes and get us over the line and mate, it could be it could feel absolutely horrific but equally it could be one of our, the best nights as a football supporter it's what it's all about it's what it's all about yeah so and look whatever happens credit to Forrest because they've been absolutely brilliant and you'd have to say that whoever does win it if it is going to be a win for one of the sides they you know they probably would then deserve it of course of uh, course to go on and win it but you know even if they did win it if it's a 1-0 uh, you know it's it's a two goal margin we, you know, we could beat Millwall four five nil, and they still believe it a bit. So it's still not. Yeah, then they'll be whole comfortably. That's that's my worry. Is that they'll be? I don't see. I just saw. You always look at it in the end of the season because they got nothing to play for. Hull, they just lost five nil to Bristol City. Oh, brilliant! They were one of the worst teams we've played this season. So yeah, I think I I think we've got to assume that they're going to beat. Like we kind of did against Swansea before. Swansea are a lot better than Hull, yeah. but we had to assume that they're going to go and win, and they did. So yeah, I think it's all on this one, mate. To be honest. Um, so hopefully we can get it done. But what's weird is I feel like if we go and win, I'll then be cheering Forrest on probably in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, no, I really weird. Well. But I'm hope my I'm really hoping that Steve Cook will have two promotions to be a part of this season. Mm. You know, two man of the matches at Craven Cottage for two teams. He could have two promotions this what, season. What, so two medals? Yeah, I think he probably That's would. So I don't weird, know how it works. Isn't it? That's he, weird. He it, could probably could because he's he still played a part this season. He's played a massive part. He was unbelievable at Craven Cottage for us. Has anyone had that before? It's got to be players. I always remember there was. I think it was when Leicester won the league actually that they had Richie Delat who mm. played enough games to get a medal for Leicester, but then he went on loan to Middlesbrough and got promoted. There's always ones like that. Always weird little stats, mate. Inside this brain, always this weird. brain here. Um, cheers for watching, guys. Look, um, there there will be some kind of free for all. Uh, Maybe on the pitch, maybe outside directly afterwards, who knows. But um, look, um, we will see you, Dean Court, at the chairs. And um, yeah, see you then. Du, du, du. Oh, I'm so scared, I'm so scared. <laughs> oh, oh when you try your best. <laughs>